I'm Dr. Linda Gromko, and this is Transgender Medicine Made Simple. We're doing a series on masculinizing surgeries, and today we're going to be looking at hysterectomy. Now, why would a hysterectomy be included in a masculinizing surgery? Well, that's because many trans men will have their uterus, cervix, fallopian tubes, and ovaries removed, often in preparation for phalloplasty, which is the creation of a penis. So here is the reproductive anatomy in somebody who is born with a uterus. The uterus is the pink sort of triangular shaped structure at the middle of the slide. Now the uterus is where a baby would grow during a pregnancy. Above that and on either side, we see the fallopian tubes and then the ovaries, which are kind of almond shaped. The ovary is where the eggs are produced and it's also where progesterone and estrogen are produced. Now let's go back and look at the uterus again. At the bottom of the uterus, we see the cervix. The cervix is what is sampled during a pap test to look for cervical cancer. And below that, we see the vagina. So removing the, the uterus is often called a hysterectomy with a bilateral salpingo oophorectomy. So removal of the uterus and the fallopian tubes and the ovaries. As in any surgery, it all depends on what you want to accomplish. When you remove the ovaries, this reduces the estrogen and progesterone production. There's still some estrogen and progesterone production, but much, much less. There are no more eggs produced by the ovaries if they're removed. And removing the uterus means no pregnancy and no more bleeding and cramps. You know, it's interesting that sometimes trans men will have bleeding and cramps when they run out of their testosterone. And finally, there is no risk of uterine fallopian tube or cervical or uterine cancer once those structures are removed. Now, the surgeries used to be done through the abdomen, but these days there are other options. The surgery through the abdomen is called a TAHBSO, Total Abdominal Hysterectomy and Bilateral Salpingo Oophorectomy. This is a more invasive surgery. The healing time is longer, but it might be needed if a person has large uterine fibroids. Now, this picture shows fibroids, which are kind of a small to moderate size. I've seen them the size of grapefruits or oranges, for example. And when they're that big, sometimes it's important to open the abdomen to remove the uterus for that process. More often today, these surgeries are done by minimally invasive techniques. Laparoscopy, which is a keyhole surgery where a camera is inserted through the navel and instruments are inserted into small holes on either side. And there's also robotic assisted surgery. Here's a picture here of a doctor operating the robot, which will then have arms connected to parts of the patient's body. Now, Older techniques, the TAHBSO, required more time in the hospital, like about five days, and more recovery time, like five or six weeks. But minimally invasive surgeries may require an overnight stay only, and if that, and only a two-week recovery time. So in summary, the type of hysterectomy depends on the needs of an individual, but hysterectomy removes the uterus and cervix, and in most cases, the ovaries and fallopian tubes as well. There is no more vaginal bleeding from running out of testosterone or from benign conditions of the uterus. There is no more risk of cancer of the uterus, the cervix, ovaries, or fallopian tubes because these structures are removed. There is no more capacity for typical reproduction. So to plan this ahead is very important by harvesting eggs or planning a pregnancy before having these structures to remove these uh, organs. This also frees the path for an individual to go on to phalloplasty and its variations. I hope this information has been helpful to you today. If so, please like this video and subscribe to my channel, Transgender Medicine Made Simple. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you in the next video.